Transverse waves are waves in which the vibrations are at a right angle to the direction of wave motion. Light, the vibrations of a plucked string, and water waves are all good examples. Let's look at a water wave. The wave travels from left to right, and the vibrations are up and down. The vibrations are said to be moving in a transverse direction to the direction of motion. If we look edge on at the wave, we can see that the up and down vibrations are symmetrical about a centre line. The maximum distance the vibration moves away from the wave centre line is called the amplitude of the wave. The amplitude essentially tells us how noticeable the wave is. For water waves, you would hardly notice a wave with a 1mm amplitude hitting you. However, a 10m wave would grab your attention. The situation is similar with light. The amplitude of the wave tells us how bright the source is. In fact, the amplitude is related to the power that the wave carries. It is reasonably obvious that the wave is regular in shape. This means you can identify a section of it that can be repeated end to end to make up the whole wave. If you measure the length of this small repeating section of the wave, then you have measured the wavelength of the wave. Remember that the wavelength is the length of a section length that when placed end to end gives the whole wave. Now let's unfreeze the wave and let it move again. The wave is moving from left to right at a constant speed. This is called, rather obviously, the speed of the wave. The speed depends on the type of wave and what it is travelling through. For water waves, for example, Waves travel faster in deep water than they do in shallow water. This effect leads to tsunami waves. Imagine that I stand in a fixed position and count how many peaks pass me in a given time. I might, for example, count 20 peaks in 10 seconds. I can then ask, if 20 pass me in 10 seconds, how many would pass me in one second? The answer is 20 divided by 10, so 2. I can say the frequency of peaks passing me is 2 per second. This is the frequency of the wave. It doesn't matter whether you count peaks, troughs, or somewhere in between, as long as you count the same part of the wave every time. Now imagine I have two waves of different wavelengths, but moving at the same speed. If one wave has twice the wavelength of the other, then the frequency of peaks on that wave passing a point will be half that of the other. So frequency and wavelength are related properties. In fact, the frequency can tell us how long it takes for one wavelength to pass. A frequency of two per second means that each wave takes one half of a second to pass a point. We know how long the wave is from the wavelength, so we know the distance travelled in this time. From this, we can work out the speed of the wave as distance travelled divided by the time taken. This turns out to be equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by the wavelength of the wave. 